Okay, welcome back guys. So we are completing the Great Depression and specifically what we're going to look at is part of the Great Depression because if it wasn't bad enough, there was a severe drought going on at the same time. And so what you guys are going to learn about in your notebooks this week is, is how that impacted a situation that was already bad. And so just to recap some of the things that we looked at last week, we know that the Depression impacted almost everybody. Now, Texas, you know, I, I've told you guys multiple times throughout the school year that Texas has always been fairly well off financially. And it, while it was still impacted by the Great Depression, Texas, other, when you compare it to other states, it did pretty well. Um, and that's mostly in part to having a diverse economy. You know, we have oil, which has always been needed, which helped us a lot. Um, and other industries that the world relies on. So going back, you guys learned about LULAC. LULAC is the League of United Latin Americans, and it's a uh, it's still around today. It's a great organization. When you guys get up to high school, um, you'll have the opportunity to join LULAC if that's something that interests you. Um, they're still around, and they still continue to fight for Latin American um, equality. So to sort of build up to the Dust Bowl and why it's significant, uh, we know you guys learned in your notebooks last week that people who lived in farmland, so rural areas, they're the ones who are hit really hard, okay? They're losing their homes, they're losing their farms, they're losing their way of lives. Okay, so between 1929 from that Black Tuesday crash to 1932, almost half a million farmers lost their land. That's a lot of people who lose a lot of uh, a lot of their livelihoods okay so one of the things here that I put is that the farmers had the advantage that they could grow food from their family so when they lose that opportunity to do that they have to try to come up with other ways and it just creates this horrible situation and now the Dust Bowl we've had droughts in the past uh, we went through about a I think about a six-year drought there uh, in the 2000s where it just it, we just didn't have enough rain to really counteract what was going on and you guys live in Texas you know it gets hot here when that when you have when it's really hot and there's no rain it's going to dry out all the soil and so when that happens there's what's called topsoil and it with high winds on the plains you guys know the plains are flat there's high wind it's creating these dust storms and so what what it is and i'll show you a map when i get to your digital notebooks of what why it's called the dust bowl okay but what i want you to know is that it's a there was a severe drought mostly between the years of 1930 to about 1932 okay and with that everything dried out and dusty high winds it created it created this really terrible living condition called the Dust Bowl. That's why I wanted to spend a whole week on this because it's it's directly impacts Texas, parts of Texas at least. So in one storm in 1934, it picked up millions of tons of dust from the plains and carried it to the East Coast. So it was, I mean, it was just, when you look at it on the scale of the United States, it impacted one area really hard, but it, it did reach other areas. And this is just a good picture to show you of a, a dust storm approaching Stratford, Texas in 1934. There's another picture of that. Elkhart, Kansas. So if you guys notice, you know, you go when you're following Texas and you go north directly, you've got Oklahoma, then Kansas. So this this whole central part of the United States is what's going to be impacted the hardest. This is a uh, this is soil and dust at topsoil blowing across the plains. You can see this sort of flat area back here. It almost looks like the Panhandle, but this is South Dakota. But the dust was strong enough to cover cars and wagons. So the hardest hit regions are going to be Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado. So the, when I show you this map here in a second, that gives you an idea. It'll give you a better idea of what what these areas, excuse me, what areas were highly affected. So many farmers migrated to California and the Pacific Coast states to get away from this situation. Again, it's one thing to have a drought and highly, you know, a really bad dust situation 
it's another thing for that to be a really bad drought to be going on on top of a country that's in financial ruin. When it rains, it pours, kind of like right now. Um, so this is another picture that shows a family headed west to escape the dust storms. This everybody just pack up everything you can into the back of this. Almost looks like a you know it's a truck, but it almost looks like a covered wagon. You know, kind of using things from the past and just getting out of there, getting away from it. Here's the map that I wanted to show you. I tried. To, I should have put this in uh, earlier. So we've got Texas down here. This is that Texas Panhandle. And you guys, I, I've told you a lot about what it's like up here in Lubbock, for those of you that haven't been. It's flat. There, You can just look out on the horizon and all you see is just a flat field, no trees, nothing, as far as your eyes can see. Okay, so that's part of the reason why this whole area is called the Great Plains, okay? And this red area right here, this is where the most wind, the most dust, everything that picked up. So this is why it's called the Dust Bowl, all right? So even though this is the Great Plains, it sort of creates just this sort of circular situation. And when they were talking about that one storm in 1934 that hit, it literally picked up the dust from this whole region and brought it all the way over here to the East Coast. Okay, so this is all stuff that we've looked at before. Um, one of the things I didn't get too big into was um, the, the sort of the government's reaction last week. I wanted to talk about the New Deal and uh, Hoover's, Hoover's attempt to respond to this and then Franklin Roosevelt's attempt to respond to this. Okay, so one of the things Hoover did was uh, he, he gave a lot of uh, government projects to sort of get people employed and one of the things that they that he wanted to do was create um, a major dam that would provide that would create a water reservoir in uh, the Las Vegas region so this area this whole area right here is it's all desert it's a hot desert uh, if you've been to Vegas in the summertime you know it's it's just it's very hot okay it's mountainous over here uh, the Grand Canyon actually runs where my mouse is kind of tracing right there. Okay, and this right here is part of the Colorado River. Okay, so it's a river that comes straight from the Rockies. It flows down through here and it crosses into Nevada. Well, at this little, what you would call a choke point, they decided to build this dam. And what it would do when the water would flow through it is it would generate electricity and it could, and you see all these little power lines and stuff running away from the uh, the Hoover Dam here. And so what it would do is it would provide electricity for Las Vegas in addition to providing water for some of these cities, Las Vegas, even uh, Los Angeles all the way down there. Okay. And at the time it was, you know, it was a, considered one of the wonders of the world. It was, it's really interesting how they built it, um, that even parts of it of the dam are not even the concrete hasn't fully cured because of how they pieced it together but it's still there you can go see it um what's even more interesting is in this picture this is a really old picture uh, but when the water has dropped in this reservoir so much that you can actually see what they call the bathtub ring whoops they call it the bathtub ring and it shows you it just shows you how much the water in lake mead has drained um, me and my wife went there a couple of years ago and that, that water, even though it's in the desert, it could be 120 degrees outside, but that water is freezing because it comes straight from the Rockies. But this, this is just an example of one of those government projects that Hoover uh, did to just sort of help stimulate the economy. And, and so this, this still to this day provides water to the local region. It helps generate electricity. Um, and it's just, a, it's, it's pretty neat to see. Okay, unfortunately, uh, it's too little too late. Hoover, he, he tried his hardest, but in the end, it really, it wasn't enough, okay? So when the election comes up in the 19, early 1930s, FDR is going to win overwhelmingly, okay? We're not gonna get into that. I guess I didn't put my new deal slides in here. Okay, well, you guys learned about the new deal in your uh, digital notebooks last week and so I'm gonna go ahead and get to the digital notebook for this week okay so this week is specifically over the Dust Bowl all right 
So just like every week, you guys know how to do these tools. All right, you're gonna watch, on this slide, you're gonna watch this video. It's people who grew up in the Dust Bowl. Um, my grandparents grew up in the area. Now they weren't in the, when you look at this map again, uh, my grandpa grew up right here in North Texas, just a little bit north of Dallas, Fort Worth, and my grandmother grew up here in Eastern Kansas. So they were damaged, you know, they were kind of indirectly impacted by the Dust Bowl, but they weren't, you know, in the worst of it. And it's, it's just interesting to hear them talk about it. And so this video is going to have some other people who, who lived through it that will tell you. And so what I want you to do is just type your answer here. What was it like being in the Dust Bowl, being in a dust storm, okay? So what caused the Dust Bowl? I went into that with the lecture uh, just a few minutes ago, but I want you guys to watch this video as well and answer these two questions, answer these three questions, excuse me. So what are the two things that caused the Dust Bowl? What is a black blizzard? And what caused 60% of the population to leave? So this video is gonna give you those answers. Okay, this one is true false. Again, you're gonna watch this video and answer each one of these. The topsoil was stripped of its nutrients. Is that true or false? Well, the answer is in the video. Okay, this is talking about Okies. I'm gonna let you guys learn about that one on your own. All I'm gonna tell you is that they're pretty much the same as what you would call a hobo, but a little bit different. All right. Okay, this slide, what I want you to do is you're gonna read, sorry, watch this video on Okies and answer these questions, okay? So what you have to do for this one is you have to use the tools to underline, circle, I don't care. I really don't. If you want, what you can do is just simply, and this is not the correct answer, so don't don't follow my example, but you can also just highlight, okay? So if you don't know, you just simply highlight the area, you come up to this button right there, and you can do it like that if you want to go that route, okay? I, I really don't care what you do, just so long as you show me that you have the answer, okay? And once again, that's not the correct answer. You're actually gonna have to watch the video to get the answer. Okay, so this is a this is a billboard and it says no jobs in California. If you're looking for work, keep out. So what I want you to do is just read this sign and I want you to answer the questions. Like who do you think this is directed at? You remember that to escape the Dust Bowl, a lot of people traveled west. They went to California. Well, how do you think people in California felt about that? Sorry. Okay, this one, you're gonna to need to click on this link and open it up into another tab and look at some of the images there. And I want you to just read here and answer these questions. So you're gonna basically pick, a, you're gonna pick one of those photos and you're going to copy and paste it into this box down here. All right, and then you're gonna answer up here. Explain why that picture stood out to you. So these are just pictures of the Dust Bowl, okay? So I'll go ahead and open it up for you guys. So as you can see, this is some of those images of the Dust Bowl. So you're just gonna pick one. All right, look through them, pick one, determine, you know, and then come up with your answer. Why did, why did, you, why did that one stand out? Okay, so this one, you're gonna watch the video, and then you get to pick one. You're only picking one question to answer, okay? So, Watch the video, answer one of these two questions. Um, because things are, uh, we're, we're kind of moving into another phase here, I just want to close the Great Depression with this. It, you know, the Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, it helped a lot of Americans. It, it created a lot of systems that we have today. But in the end, it wasn't the New Deal that saved us. It wasn't uh, Wall Street that saved us. It wasn't anything like that. Believe it or not, it was World War II. That was what brought the United States out of the Great Depression, okay? Because the war effort created a lot of new jobs, and with those new jobs, people are able to get money. When people make money, they're going to spend money. When people are spending money, the economy improves, okay? So that's going to close us out for this week. It's a short week. All I want you to do is the digital notebook and then you need to go into your teams, look at your grades for this six weeks. If you see an MP or a no progress grade, you need to look at the module for that week and figure out what work you're missing, okay? 
Now, if you're if you don't know, you can email me and I can look and I can tell you what you're missing. But use this time this week to get caught up on your work, turn in all work so that you can get a passing grade for the six weeks. All right. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to email me and ask. Have a great week. Okay. Forgot to tell you this uh, to share it with me because for whatever reason this is still confusing to some of you. You go up here to this part right here in the corner. It says share. Click on it and you're going to type in my email address jmoon at AIS, AISD.net and then send. That's it. That is all you have to do. Okay, so make sure when you finish that. Click that, type in my email. Do not worry about submitting it on Canvas, okay? Don't do it. Just share it with me, okay? All right, y'all have a great week.